I got to tell you one quick story. As a matter of fact, Mark and I were talking about this the other day. Uh, years ago, I, I was a full-time pastor up in New York. I was also a full-time executive in a communications company. I was also working pretty full-time on converting a bus into a motorhome mm -hmm. because Alice and I were planning on going on the road traveling as we turned the church over to somebody else. And when I first bought this bus, it was a conversion. It was a 35-foot uh, flat-nosed school, school bus. bus. Mm -hmm. And I was doing the work. You know, I, I'd go do my job during the day, which also, by the way, was part of my ministry. And I'd come back and we'd do Bible studies every night, all night. I mean, and then when I get through midnight, I'd go out and I'd start working on the bus. And I'd work on the bus for a few hours. But this one day I was working on this bus and we had taken, I just bought the bus and we had taken all of the seats out of it. You know, it had been a school bus, so it had all those seats in it. I took all the seats out and then the next thing I did was I went up to the Motor Vehicle Bureau. This is in New York, right? The Motor Vehicle Bureau is a challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting it go there. A bureaucratic challenge. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people. So I was dressed in uh, Levi's and uh, a sweatshirt, and I had been working on the bus. I mean, I had probably grease on me and sawdust. wood shavings and sawdust, yeah. So I went there, and I went up to the counter, and, and I applied for license plates for this, for this bus. And I wanted to register it as a motorhome. Because the rates for a motorhome and rates for a bus are very, very different. Much, both of which are much higher than the rates for a car. So I went and I, I started explaining and I gave the form over to this woman at the desk. And she looked at it and she said, uh, this was registered as a bus, a school bus. And I said, yes. But I applied for a registration for a motorhome. And she said, well, she said, uh, does it have a bed in it? And I said, no, not yet. She said, well, then it's not a motorhome. She said, it has seats in it. I said, no, it doesn't, because I had already taken all the seats out. And she said, well, then it's not a bus. <laughs> so the upshot was she is literally refusing to give me any kind of Please. registration for the car, for the bus, because <clears throat> it's in her mind, it's neither a bus nor a motorhome. So I asked her, I said, can I speak to your supervisor? So she called over her supervisor, another woman. And she came over and we're going through this whole thing again. And finally she looked at me and she said, what do you want? What are you doing? And I said, I need this to, to travel the country and preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she looked at me and she said, you're a preacher? I said, I certainly am. She said, you don't look like one. And I said, well, have you ever met my brother Jesus, who was a carpenter? And she looked at me. She looked at the other woman. She said, give me the registration. So they filled out the registration, and they gave me a registration for a car. A 33-foot-long car? 30, a 30, 35-foot-long car, <laughs> which was like a, a third of the price of the others. I had the, I had the biggest car in the state of New York. <laughs> but she was judging me by outward appearance, which people do. All right? I think it was when she saw my attitude, my joy, and my peace about the whole thing, that what she saw was what I was wearing on the inside. inside. Right. I was wearing robes That's of righteousness. Shine through. The point is, that's the kind of thing that happens. People should, at the end of the day, be able to recognize Christ in you, the Holy Spirit in you, regardless of what kind of clothing you have on the outside. Mm -hmm. If we become dependent on the clothing to communicate our relationship with God with other people, we are in error. We are in error. The point is, and this is, you know, because we started all of this as let a man examine himself. Mm. So the question is, do you examine yourself and see, can people see the life of Christ in me? Or do I have to wear the right clothes on a Sunday to go into the church so people think I'm a Christian? Mm. Do I have to have some kind of this bauble or trinket on me or a T-shirt with a slogan on it mm. for people to see that I'm a Christian? A lot of people are wearing the decorations without having a heart that is declaring the mm. Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. This is, it's an important, a really, really important topic. I mean, th and this is, it's an important topic, which is why we're studying it, okay? We need to be showing the evidence of Christ in our lives. 
That's what we're supposed to be wearing because we're appraising things spiritually. We, we talked about this a, a bit last week when we talked about all the things, you know, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, put on the robes of righteousness, put on the garments of praise, all of these things. Attitude. The attitude of the righteous. It's the attitude of the righteous. It is. Absolutely it is. Um, you know, throughout religious history, even among the Jews, and then certainly within the Christian, much within the Christian church, it has always been a point that in order to show your, uh, I don't want to sound facetious, but your exalted position, mm-hmm. that you had to wear very fancy garments so people would immediately recognize that you're something special. Right, right. Do you think Jesus did that? No. I don't think so either. Mm. I don't think so either. I I think that when when all is said and done, our heart is visible to people. Yes. They may not like it. It may may take some time. But I believe that while the Lord God said, man judges by outward appearance, Mm. there is something within us called the Holy Ghost, which will make himself evident in our lives when we are walking in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I want to live a life that counts. I want to live a life that counts.